Hi everyone, now we are going to see an application in a very simple problem, but I think it's very useful to understand all what we saw in the previous video. So this simple problem is just about making inference over flipping a coin, meaning we just have the coin, we have no idea about the probability of getting heads or tails, so how we could predict what's going to happen on the next flip, right? So let's start. So this term means, what's the probability that our next flip results in heads? This means next flip, meaning in time t plus one, we are representing heads as one in our experiment, and d is all our previous data, in this case, our previous flip results, right? So here, we need to include a parameter, as you can see. So we added theta as our necessary parameter, but since we don't know it, we need to integrate over all the possibilities, right? In this case, theta is a probability, so it goes between zero and one, and we need to multiply by its posterior probability. This is exactly what we do whenever we add a parameter or a variable that we don't know its value. We integrate or sum over all the possible values and multiply by its probability on every case. Okay, so in the first factor, since we know theta because we are conditioning in theta, now we don't need the data anymore. In other words, if we flip a coin and we know the probability of heads, then we don't need to know what happened in the past, you know, because every single flip is independent. So we can reduce our equation to this thing. So let's go over each of these two factors we need to find how to calculate. The first one, it's easy and we will see why. The second one is going to be harder and here we will apply all this variation theory we saw in the previous videos and this is going to be the posterior, right? So there is one distribution that is exactly what we need to calculate the probability of getting heads in one trial. It is called the Bernoulli distribution and the probability of getting a success in, in our case is going to be represented by getting heads given a parameter theta. So here, x can take values only one or zero, nothing in between. In general, zero represents failures and one represents success. In our case, one will represent heads and zero will represent tails. And theta is the probability of getting a success. In our case, the probability of getting a one or heads. And it is a number, a continuous number between zero and one, right? Know that the way we use the notation here for a range versus a set. In this case, it's a set. That's why we use curly breaks. And here is a number in between. This is a range, right? Another way to say the same is just instead of writing the equation this way, we can say the probability is going to be theta if we're speaking about heads or one minus theta if we're speaking about tails or zero, right? You can see here that this multiplication acts like a switch because if x is one, then this term will survive and this term will be just one. So this is kind of like a compact way to write what we are saying down here. Okay, this distribution is a probability mass distribution because it gives you already a probability value. You don't need to do any integration as in probability density functions or PDFs. This is a PMF. Now that we understand the Bernoulli distribution, it is very easy to understand the binomial distribution because it's kind of like a generalized version of it because instead of having the probability of getting one success in one trial is going to be the probability of getting k successes in n independent trials or Bernoulli trials actually. And the distribution is going to depend on n and theta again. Recall that n will be the number of flips and this is the formula. It's similar in the sense that you see here theta and one minus theta to the power of something but here you have k and n and you also have this uh, term here which is the binomial coefficient and this is the formulation. Basically this term is here because since we're seeking for the probability of k successes that might happen in any of the combinations, right? It's not only one combination that can deliver k success. This is the actual number of combinations in where we could get k successes among n, right? So that's why we add this term to the probability distribution. And of course, k goes between 0 and n. We could get 0 successes or n successes, right, eventually. So let's see how it'll look like in Python. 
So as usual, we're gonna need NumPy. Let's use the beta and binomial distribution from SciPy. And let's use PyPlot. Okay, so after we imported the libraries, now let's uh, create our experiments. We will create a random seed. Let's do it 42 and then... Okay, so we will run this experiment a given amount of time. And in every experiment, we will have a certain amount of flips, right? Let's say... And then... Uh, let's say... 2,000 times, and then theta is going to be the probability of the coin. So recall that this is the probability of heads, right? It has to be something near 0 0.5. So let's generate the samples. And here we are going to use the dot random dot binomial. So let's call these samples. We are going to use the number of flips. theta and the number of experiments or runs. Okay, so now let's visualize this. So we can do a histogram of our samples. Let's use um, 40 bins, then CD equals false. Let's see if this works first. Okay, so let's add some extra information here, like um, title, we can call this, we can use an F string, it's gonna be num runs, runs of um, binomial. Let's do P, the probability equals theta, and uh, let's do N, equals num flips. Okay, we've got a title now for our plot. And uh, what we have here is the number of successes or heads. We can add that. This is uh, X label and it's going to be the number of heads. Okay. So as you can see, if we have a 0.48 probability of heads, roughly in most of the cases, we're gonna have a number of heads that is half of the total flips. Recall, we made 2000 flips, so around 0.48 times 2000, which is something around here, is going to be the mean of the number of heads we're getting. As, and as you can see here, we have like a normal distribution in where the mean is that number. In most of the cases, around 700 experiments, we got around 960 heads. We can actually plot the binomial PMF, the probability mass function. It's gonna be numpy that lean space. So let's say something between 700 and uh, 1500. 100 points. This is going to be integers, right? Because this is a discrete distribution. In the x axis, we are going to have the number of successes and that's an integer. It's not a continuous value, right? And so let's do a scatter where x is going to be t and then here we can use the binomial distribution we got from SciPy, and here is dot PMF of T, that is our X, and the parameters, the number of flips, and the theta. Okay. We can call it binomial distribution. Let's see if this works. Okay, it works. So we can add something else here. Let's add 
another scatter with a different parameter. So instead of theta, we can say um, 0 0.55, for example. And let's add some labels here so we can visualize this in a legend. This is the way we write symbols. So here we will include the value of the parameter and the number of flips. Okay, let's do the same here. But in this case, this is going to be 0.55. Sorry, let's do the following. Theta 2. And theta 2 here. Okay, and here we can add the legend. So let's run this. Oops, it didn't work. We're seeing an extra. There we go. So here we have the plot of two binomial distributions, the PMFs, and uh, these are the parameters. As you can see, when theta is higher, then we tend to have a bigger average of heads in our 2000 experiments. And in the case of, of a smaller theta, 0.48, then we have a smaller number of heads across the 2000 experiments, Yeah, about 950. Okay, so why it is easy? Because since we know theta, we know the probability of getting heads or tails. In general, this value, we know that it's around 0 0.5 for an unbiased coin. So let's see how we use the Bernoulli here. If we know that the probability is 0 0.49 of getting heads, so what's going to be the probability that our next flip is equal to 1 or we get a head? Then replacing the terms in the, in the Bernoulli equation, we get this thing. And here we can see that this is going to be 1 because 1 minus 1 here. So it's going to be theta, which is equal to 0 0.49. In case we want to calculate the probability of getting tails, given that theta is 0.47, for example, then in this case, this term will survive. Here will be 1. So then we are using the second part, which is 1 minus 0.47. So that will be 0.53. Okay, so it's very simple. So that's why if we know theta, then we can immediately calculate this factor in the integral.